What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use Clothworks in order to actually simulate cloth in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So remember that Clothworks is a SketchUp extension that simulates the movement of cloth in SketchUp. And so you can download it by going to sketchucation.com and um, downloading the extension from there. There's a free version and a paid version. Uh, the paid version is going to have all the features. The free version, I think, doesn't have the pens and something else. But um, e either way, you can get that from Sketchucation. I'll link to it in the notes down below. And so the way that we want to use this is we want to start just by blocking out a shape, right? So I'm just going to use the rectangle tool and just draw a shape. And then I'm just going to scale it out over this tail mo table model so that it kind of overhangs a little bit. So something like this, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move it up off of that surface just because the Z fighting there was kind of bothering me. But now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna make it a group. And so now we have the basic building blocks for our first cloth simulation. And so the first thing that we wanna do, um, and the thing that I always do before I do any simulations with this tool is I wanna make sure that I save my model, um, just cause it, this can get a little bit twitchy depending on, um, depending on a lot of different factors. Just save before you do your simulations, you ought to be fine. Um, but what we wanna do now is we wanna start by right clicking on this and making a, making it a cloth. And so with Clothworks enabled, you should be able to right click on pretty much anything and go down to Clothworks and find the options to make different things, different things in SketchUp or different Clothworks items in SketchUp. In this case, right, we wanna take this and we wanna make it a cloth. So now that we've done that, we can click on the play button to simulate it. But notice how at the moment it's just falling in space, right? I can click and drag it, but it's not really doing anything. It's just falling around the table. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on the reset button right here. And so what we need to do is we need to tell Clothworks to do something with this table. And so in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna right click, go down to Clothworks, and we wanna make this a collider. And so when we make this a collider, what that means is that means that now when this falls and hits the surface, it's just going to sit on the surface right? There's a lot of things wrong with this right now, but it is colliding with this object. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And so you might have noticed that this basically just sits on the table like a giant piece of cardboard, right? Which is not what we want. And the reason that it's doing that is because there's not enough geometric detail in this object in order for Clothworks to calculate the way that the mesh um, would act on the surface. So let's say just for example, and this is not how you'd want to do this, but let's say that we were to split this face up just like this. So just adding a little bit of additional detail. All right. So now if we click on the play button and run the simulation, notice that we're getting a little bit more bend in this object right here because we've given it some additional geometry, but we haven't given it nearly enough. Right. And so again, this just looks, looks like a giant piece of cardboard sitting on our table. So what we need to do is first off, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to erase these lines because those were more um, as an example than anything else. And so there's a bunch of tools in here that are going to help you subdivide this object into different kinds of geometry. And so in this case, for example, we want to right click on this and go down to the Clothworks option and under cloth, because we made this a cloth, um, there's a bunch of options in here for applying grids um, in order to subdivide this into smaller pieces. So the adaptive grid is going to create a grid that basically comes in here and uses a mathematical function in order to do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a quadrilateral grid and you can set your resolution to whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 4,000, but notice how if we toggle on our hidden geometry in our view, now we can see that this has come in here and this has subdivided this um, so that now it's going to be able to simulate this more realistically because there's more geometry in here. And so again, before we rerun this, we wanna make sure that we save our model, but then we can click on the play button in order to simulate this. Well, notice how now the simulation is gonna take a lot longer, but now this is actually coming in here and it's simulating the way that the cloth would hang over this table um, because it has so much additional detail in here. So if we were to click the stop button right here, notice how now we've got our cloth overhang or overhung, I guess, on our table. And so there's a few things we need to do in the settings to make this more realistic. So the first thing 
is we want to toggle this back up by clicking on the toggle drape button. So if you toggle drape, that's going to toggle this between flat and the actual draped version. But what we want to do is we want to jump into our UI settings right here. And there's just a couple different things that we want to do um, in order to make this look a little bit better. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our cloth settings right here. And we want to make sure that we click on the option for self collide. So that is going to take longer, but what it's going to do is it's going to set this up so that it's going to collide with itself when it's doing that simulation. That means you won't have the cloth kind of going through itself. So there's also some presets in here that we can use um, that are going to make this act like different kinds of cloth, right? So if we were to select the silk, for example, this cloth is gonna act different than we if we select it as cotton. In this case, we're gonna select the option for cotton because this is basically going to be a cotton sheet in my opinion. And so now let's go ahead and rerun this. So I'm just gonna do a file save and we'll go ahead and rerun this just by clicking on the play button. And so that's gonna come in here and that's going to calculate this um, when it's doing the simulation. So it's gonna simulate this falling down just like it did before, but it's gonna look a little bit different, right? You're not gonna get the overlap on the corners that you were before. This is going to take a little longer because it is going to be calculating that self collision and everything like that. But notice how we don't have like a gray material over here where the cloth kind of like goes through itself like we did before. But now if I click on the stop button, this actually looks pretty good, right? I'm fairly happy with the way that this worked. However, we have a little bit of a problem and let's go ahead and let's add a material to this. So if we go to our materials and I'm going to, I'm actually gonna use one of the tile materials just so we can really see this. So there's a tile checkerboard that really shows us the way that this works. If I apply this to this object right now, notice how we're getting all sorts of issues with our texture. Right, And so the reason is we didn't apply this before we simulated our cloth. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the size on this down to maybe like six inches or maybe even smaller, maybe like two inches, something like that. But notice how we're getting all these mapping issues with our texture. So the reason for that is because you need to apply the texture to your object before it simulates what the cloth is going to do. And so the way that we can do that is we just need to rerun our simulation and so we need to change one more setting before we do this. So we want to jump in here to the UI and we want to make sure in the simulation, that, but we want to make sure that we've checked the box for update textures so that this is simulating the textures as the simulation goes. So that is going to make your performance slower, but it's going to make your textures work properly. And so the other thing we want to make sure we do before we run this simulation is we actually don't want this material to be applied, be applied to the group that this is in. We want this to be actually applied to the actual face of our cloth. So in order to do that, we just want to double click in here, select the option for tile checker like this. And so then this is applied directly to that face, not to the outside of the group. Well, now when we run our simulation, right, we're going to do a file save and then we're going to run this. And then when we run this now, if we click the stop button, notice how our texture is applied properly to our object inside of SketchUp. And so if you do find that this uh, hasn't quite calculated the way that you want it to, there's a few different things you could do. So when you first apply your cloth right here, we applied our quadrilateral grid. If you add a higher resolution to that, so instead of 4,000, maybe you went to like 6,000 or 8,000, something like that, that's gonna give you smaller um, subdivisions on your surface. That's gonna get you more detail. So you can definitely mess with that. You can also mess around with the different cloth types, right? So a silk, for example, is gonna get you more overlap on this and it's gonna look a little bit less stiff. And so that's how you can do simplified cloth where you just kind of like drop it over a surface like this. Now, one other thing I wanna hit on real quick is let's say that you wanted to make something vertical, right? So let's say you wanted to do like some drapes or something like that. So let's say I had a vertical object. So I'm gonna make this a group and then we wanna do the same thing, right? We wanna come in here, right click on it and we want to make it a cloth. We want to give it a subdivision, right? So I'm just gonna do the quadrilateral grid Again, I'm gonna bump this up to like 6,000 right here. Remember that the more that you do that, the longer that's going to take. But now if we look at this, we just wanna double check to make sure that it did it. Um, but now what I wanna do is I want to set up some pins, right? Because I want this to hang. I want it to act like it's hanging. And so the way that we can do that 
is there's a pin function right here. One thing to note is the pins, I believe, only work in the paid version. So just be aware of that. But what I wanna do is I just wanna come in here and I just wanna pin the two corners of this object right here, right? And so when I add a pin and I apply them to this object right here, now if I run the simulation, note that this is gonna hang from those different pins, right? So it's gonna hang across here like this. And so one thing you should be aware of is this is actually live. So if we were to, we're gonna say yes to simulate just the selected cloth, but you can actually jump into your settings and you can actually adjust these settings live. So for example, notice how I can toggle this stretch. And when I drag the stretch to the right, um, basically what it's going to do is it's gonna make it so that the stretch function of this is changed so it doesn't stretch quite as much. So you can adjust these um, by coming in here and adjusting the different settings in order to see what they're gonna to do to your result. Um, so in this case, for example though, what I might do is I might add another pin in the middle like this. And even, even then you might even have a couple more, right? So maybe I'll add one here and I'll add one here. And so then if I click play, and this runs, this is going to be supported in multiple different locations. But if you have the paid version of this, you can actually click on the different pins and you can move them inside of your simulation, right? So if I click and drag this right here, notice how I can use this in order to move the pins around. So we could use that to both move them over, which we just did, or we could also select all of them and we could scale them together. And so when we do that, what it's going to do is it's going to move all of these closer together like this. And so what you can do with that is you can use this in order to simulate things like curtains and other things like that. And so one thing that we didn't change on this one is we do wanna make sure, and we're gonna reset this, we do wanna make sure that we've set this up with self collide turned on. Um, in general, that is something that you're pretty much going to turn on with any simulation. But now, if we click play, I'm just going to select all of these and I'm just going to drag them together like this. And again, if you move it too quickly, it makes the simulation get a little bit uh, wonky is probably a good word. So just kind of do this slowly so that you're not getting faces kind of running into faces and other things like that. Um, one other thing that I probably should have done is I probably should have set this to be like the cotton or something like that with a different preset before I started doing that. So I'm just gonna set this to cotton and I'm gonna run it again. But this is a good way to simulate drapes and curtains inside of SketchUp um, using only a flat plane like this. All right, so I'll link to Clothworks in the notes down below. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're using this, um, if you have any cool uses for cloth simulation and 3D modeling. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.